For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a full skein of Lion Brand's Pound of Love in turquoise. As for tools, a 2, 6.5, and 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There's an optional written pattern that can help out too, link in the description if you'd like to grab that and follow along. And watch till the end of the video to find out how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using 5 stitches for this project and they will be as follows. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet half double crochet, treble crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Starting off this top, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, grab our 2 millimeter hook, and start off by doing some measuring. The first measurement that we're going to make is from the depth of where we want our v-neck to be going all the way up to our shoulder. And then once we have that measurement, you're going to make a chain that comes out to that measurement. And mine just so happens to be 11 inches or 28 centimeters, or that comes out to about 75 chains. And then once when we have that chain, we're going to be inserting a stitch marker into that last chain. Now that we have our first chain, as you guys can see, we have inserted our stitch marker into that last chain. The next measurement that we're going to need to make is from our shoulder we were just at and that's going to go across to the other side of our shoulder. And mine is a total of 10 inches or 15 centimeters or a total of 65 chains. So go ahead and make a chain for whatever measurement you guys have and then insert your stitch marker into that last chain as well. We've just made our way down with the chain that goes from shoulder to shoulder and now we're going to make this chain from our shoulder going back down to our v-neck. So it should be the same amount of chain slash measurements that we had for the first portion. But just to let you guys know, mine is also going to be the same 75 chains that I had and then also 11 inches or 28 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and make that chain and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the rest of this chain. So this is what our chain should be looking like so far. I just wanted to show you guys the general shape of what we're going for. Once when we have the complete length of our collar, we're actually going to slip stitch into the first chain that we made. And then we're also going to be going in with an extra chain along the bottom for the size of the actual collar that we want. So I'm going to show you guys how we're going to slip stitch it into this first chain. The first thing that we're going to do, I already have it in here, but the first thing we're going to do is run our thumb along one side of our chain making sure that it's not twisted and we're just doing this so that it is easier for us to be going into the next row and once we have that we're going to slip stitch into that first chain so what we're going to do at this point we're going to be inserting our hook into the first chain that we made once we have that we're going to yarn over pull through both loops that's on our hook and now both sides should be attached and then once when we have that, go ahead and measure out and see how thick you guys want your collar to be. I already know my measurement. And so I'm going to be going in with a chain of 20 at the end, or that's going to be a length of two and a half inches or seven centimeters. Now that we have our little extra chain chunk along the bottom of our collar, what we're going to do from here is start to go in with our treble crochet detail, but we're first going to need to work our way up to treble crochet. So the first thing we're going to do is go in with a single, a half double, a double, and then a treble. And then from there, we're going to continue trebles going all the way down. So what we're going to do from here is do a chain up of one and then into that second loop from our hook, we're going to go in with a single crochet. Once we have that single crochet, we do want to work our way up. So we're going to be doing one half double into the loop right after that. And then we're also going to be doing a regular double crochet right after that so that we can work our way up to the treble a little bit easier. So there is our double crochet. And then once we have that, we're just going to be going all the way around with treble crochets until we get to the last three loops that we have along this side. And then we're going to do the same thing of double, half, double, single so that it can come down to a point. So let's do the first few trebles together. I'm going to yarn over twice into that next available loop that we have in our chain. I'm going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first treble crochet. And then from here, it's going to be fairly simple. We're just going to continue doing treble crochets, putting one into every loop all the way up until we reach our first stitch marker. And I'll meet you guys back so that we can do our increase of three treble crochets into that stitch marker together. So we've just made our way all the way down to our first stitch marker. And what we're going to do is do an increase of three. So we're going to take the stitch marker out for now, but don't put it too far because we will put it back. But into that loop that the stitch marker was into, we're going to put three treble crochets into that one loop. So into that next available loop that we have, we're going to go in with one treble crochet, with two treble crochet, and then one more, three treble crochet, all into that same loop. And then we're going to be inserting our stitch marker back into that middle loop that we did into this increase of three. So here's one, two, three. Insert our stitch marker into that second loop. And then from here, put one treble crochet into every loop that we have going all the way back down to our next stitch marker. We're going to be doing another increase of three, but we'll meet each other back to do that. And then we're going to do more treble crochets all the way down our work and also going down the opposite side of this chunk that we left for ourselves on the end of our work. So I'll meet you guys back once we get over to this next stitch marker. We've made our way over to our other stitch marker and we're going to do the same thing that we did into the last. So we're just going to take our stitch marker out for now and then into this next loop. We're going to go in with a set of three treble crochet into that loop. So we have one treble crochet. Here is two treble crochet ish. And then one more, three treble crochet. And then from here, we're going to be inserting our stitch marker back into our work. We're going to be inserting it into the second loop that we have, because that is the second treble crochet that we have in our set of three, just like that. And then once we have that, go ahead and put one treble crochet into every loop that we have going all the way back down. And then I'll meet you guys back once we get to this little overhang chunk that we have, just so I can talk to you guys about what we're going to do and why. So I'll meet you guys back once we get to this portion right here. So this is what things should be looking like once when we have made our way all the way around with our treble crochets and we are ready to be going into this little chain chunk that we left ourselves. So I just wanted to show you guys what it's looking like. But once we get here, I do have one tip to tell you guys is right before we go into our little chain chunk, make sure that your work isn't twisted because it's really easy for this treble crochet row to get twisted while we're going into our work. But once when we're sure that it's not twisted, we are going to start working into that chain chunk that we left for ourselves. And now that we're here, all we're going to do is continue going all the way down with treble crochets, but leaving the last three loops so that we can maintain this little point that we have. So into the third to last, it's going to be a double crochet, second to last, a half double, and then last is a single crochet. And then from there, we can get started on the rest of this work. So going into this little chunk, like I said, we're just gonna do the first one together. We're still doing treble crochets for now, so we're gonna do a yarn over twice, and then into this first loop that we have, into this chain chunk, I guess is what we're calling it now. We're gonna go in with a treble crochet and then go ahead and keep putting one treble crochet into each of these loops leaving the last three so that we can do our decrease together we did our treble crochets all the way down our little chain chunk that we left for ourselves and we have left the last three loops one two three they're pretty small but we're going to be going in with a double a half double and then a single so let's do that together this first one is going to be a double because we wanted to gradually decrease down to a point so here is our first one that's our double the next one is a half double insert pull through pull through all three and then the last one right here that little loop at the end is going to be a single so insert and if we can it's probably a little tight single crochet and then once when we have that we're going to be doing a chain up of one we're going to do a decrease slip stitch into these first two loops that we have 
and then go back in with our half double, double to treble. But once when we do that, that's going to be front and back posts. So what we're going to do is into this first available loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops, and that is our decrease. We're doing that so that this point can remain as pointy as it is. And once we have this, we're going to go in with our first half double crochet, but a front post half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over once and then into this first post that we have, it should be a treble crochet. We're going to be inserting our hook behind that post and then through the other side. So we should have that entire treble crochet that we just did on our hook. And we're doing that instead of going on top into these loops where we usually go into. So we're going to insert our hook behind right here, yarn over, pull through from here. We're just going to finish off our half double crochet like normal. So we should have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops that's on our hook. And then that's the start to our detail for our collar. The next is actually going to be a back post double crochet. So from here, we're going to yarn over once and how we do any back post crochet, doesn't matter if it's half double, double, single, treble, whatever. What we're going to do is go behind our work that we have, and then we're going to be inserting our hook over this next post that we have. So this is a treble. So we're going to take our hook, place it over that next post that we have. And then from here, we're going to do a double crochet like normal. So we're going to yarn over and pull through that treble crochet. We should have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. And then that is our back post double crochet. And then once when we have that, we can go in with our front and back post treble. So we're going to do one of each of those together. Since our previous one was a back post, we're going to be alternating between front post and back post. So this next one is going to be a front post treble. So we're going to yarn over twice and then into this next post that we have, we're going to be inserting our hook behind that post, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first front post treble. And next we're going to be going in with a back post treble. So we're going to yarn over twice for all the back posts. We're going to be going behind our work and then over this next post that we have, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to keep doing front and back post treble crochets all the way down until we hit our stitch marker because we are going to be maintaining that increase that we have over there. So go ahead and keep doing this all the way down and then I'll meet you guys back once we get to our stitch marker. So we're still working towards our stitch marker, but I just wanted to pop in and tell you guys. So we're not quite at our stitch marker yet, but I did just want to pop in and say that you guys are troopers. If you guys are trying this, working with a two millimeter hook with a category four yarn is not easy at all. It's already been a couple hours and I'm only on the first row or the collar and it is been a little bit of a struggle, but I wanted to say thank you for sticking with us and that it'll be worth it. I completely promise it's going to be great, but <laughs> go ahead and continue on with your work. I just wanted to say thanks and also hi and I appreciate you guys. <laughs> We are at our stitch marker and what we're going to do now is do an increase of three but with whatever is the next post that we're going into. So the last post that I did was a back post so we're going to be doing an increase of three into this post and it's going to be a front post. If you guys made your way over and it's a back post that is totally fine. You're just going to do three of them into that same post. But what we're going to do from here is yarn over twice, go into that next post that we have and we're going to go in with three post treble crochets. So there is my first treble crochet into the front post. We're going to be going into that same post, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And then once when we have this, we have just one more insert, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And this is our increase of our front post treble crochets. I'm actually going to do this last one just one more time. There we go. 
And then once when we have that from here, we're going to continue on with the pattern. So since this was a front post, we're going to go into that next post with a back post treble crochet. And then we're going to do the same thing once we make our way over to the other stitch marker that we have. So whatever is the next post, we're just going to go into that post with three of the same one and then continue on the pattern from there going all the way down. And then I'll meet you guys back once when we get just about five loops away from this bottom corner that we have. So we've made it all the way down and we did leave the last five loops, like I said, and now we're just going to finish off the same way that we started. So now we're going to want to decrease it down to the point. So we're going to do a double crochet into the fourth to last, but a post double crochet. So this is all dependent on your pattern. It could be a front, could be a back and then a next post half double crochet then two slip stitches into the last two loops from there. So let's do this together. I have a back post double crochet to do. We're going to yarn over once, go behind our work, go over that post, yarn over, pull through. From here, we're going to pull through two and pull through two. Once we have that, I have a front post half double to go into. So we're going to prepare for a half double, insert our hook into that next post, yarn over, pull through. And since this is a half double crochet. We're going to be yarning over and then pull through all three loops. So yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then once we have that into those next two loops, we're going to be going in with a slip stitch. So here is one, here is two. And then now this second row is all finished up. And from here, we're going to work our way up to the next row. And the rest of the rows that we have after this is going to be exactly the same way that we did the previous row. So let's just start this off together going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then into this first available loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through with a slip stitch. There is one slip stitch, and then we're going to slip stitch into the loop after that as well. And then from here, we're going to prepare for a half double, and then into this next post that we have, we're going to go into that post with whichever kind of post it is. So this is a front post that we have. So I'm going to go into there with a front post, half double. And once we have that, we are still trying to extend it. So we're going to go in with a back post double. Once we have our double, now we can go in with our treble. So we're going to yarn over twice, go into that next post with a treble crochet. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we hit that increase of three that we have into the corner, which is our little shoulder chunk. Once we get into that, second loop that we have or where our stitch marker is, we're going to be doing another post increase of three. So whatever post this is, whether if it be front or back post, we're just going to be putting three of them into that post. And then from there, continue on the pattern going all the way down, making sure that we're going into the post with the same kind of post it was in the previous row. So for example, if this one is a front post, we're going to go in with a front post as well. And then once we get to this next stitch marker, we're going to do another increase of three into that second post that we have on our stitch marker and then work our way down. And then we're going to end this row off the same way that we started. And we're going to keep going back and forth like that until we have a collar size that we like. And then I'll meet you guys back to let you guys know how many rows I did and then the length that I have as well. So we've just made it back with our collar and we have this beautiful piece right here. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of five rows and then the thickness all the way around that I have is two inches or five centimeters. And I'm very excited about this because this looks really, really good. But the next thing we're going to have to do is actually just go in with single crochets just so that we can clean up these edges so that we can go in with our row of single crochet ish for the next row. So I'll talk to you guys about that in a second, but everything else should have a loop going all the way around. All we're going to do is just work our way down do an increase of three so that we can maintain this corner, work our way back up until we get to this first loop that we have into our single crochets, slip stitch, and then we will do the rest from there. So let's get started so we can move on. <laughs> so this is the last loop that I have. This is actually a slip stitch because we were doing two slip stitches at the end or the beginning, whichever way you guys are looking at it. But now that we're here, as you guys can see, these are kind of loops, but they're not very pretty. So we're just going to go into them just to clean them up a little bit. So if you guys see a loop, go ahead and just put a single crochet in there and then just keep doing this all the way down. And say if you make your way down to a section that doesn't look like a loop, 
kind of like, ooh, if I can get into here, kind of like this little section right here. You're just going to have to eyeball it and see however many single crochets you would want to put. I would recommend only putting one because the next row we're going to go into is actually going to kind of decrease. I'll talk to you guys about it in a second, but if you guys get to a space like this, try your best to only put one single crochet. But go ahead and keep doing that until you guys get to this corner loop and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do an increase of three in here together. Okay, so we've just done our single crochets all the way down until we got to our middle loop. Now I've already tested this out, so as you guys can see, there's a little hole in there for me, but since you guys are gonna be going into the same loop or at least trying to, if you guys can't go into this loop, I completely understand. It was actually very tough for me to get in here. But if you guys can't go into this middle loop that we have right here, try to just find one that is very close to the middle so that we can maintain our increase of three because this does need to stay a point. But either way, into whatever loop you guys have in the middle, you're going to go in with three single crochet to maintain this corner. So there's one into that same loop, two, and then one more, three. And that is our three single crochet for that corner. And from here, we're just going to do the same thing that we did on this side, do single crochets all the way up until we get to the first slip stitch that we have on this side. We're going to slip stitch into that loop and then from there, we're going to be going in with our decrease section for the body portion, but I'll talk to you guys about that once when we get there. So we're back and we have slip stitched into that first slip stitch that we had along this side and everything is actually coming out looking pretty even, which I knew that it would, but this is what things are looking like. And the next thing we're going to do is actually do a version of a decrease so that we can go in with our six and a half millimeter hook. So let's lay this stuff down and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. So this is what our collar portion should look like right now. And like I said, we do need to go in with a six and a half millimeter hook, which is significantly larger than the two that we have been working with. So we're gonna need to kind of make our own loops for this next row so that we can go in with this six and a half millimeter hook. And the way we're gonna do that is actually we're going to continue working. So we're going to do a chain up of one. We're going to single crochet into this first loop. We're going to do a chain up of one and then we're going to skip that next loop and then go into the, I guess, third loop from there and then single crochet. And then from there, once when we've made our way all the way around, we're going to go into those loops that we just made for ourselves, that little chain up over this skipped loop that we have with the six and a half millimeter hook. And we're doing that also because as you guys can see, this from these corners going all the way down to this v-neck is actually quite long. And if we go in with our front panel the way that we typically do, which is just going in, basically putting one row into every loop or every other loop, depending on what stitch we're doing, there's going to be a lot of, I guess, fabric, if you want to call this fabric, there's going to be a lot of fabric along the front and then not as much in the back and we want to try to keep this as even as possible since this is significantly longer so that's why i'm calling this next section a decrease but not the traditional decrease but we're going to get started on this next row cut and tie and then we can get started on the body and then attach it to this guy and then move on from there so what we're doing from here is doing a chain up of one and then we can go ahead and just single crochet into that first available loop that we have. And then if you guys want, it's not necessary, but I will anyways, insert my stitch marker into, oh boy, if we can, insert my stitch marker into that single crochet that we just made for ourselves, just so I know that this is where we started when we make our way all the way around. But once we get here, we're going to do a chain up of one. We're going to skip this next loop and then do a single crochet into the loop after that. So we're just going to be skipping one loop. Let's do this one more time. I know that this is quite difficult going in with the two millimeter hook, but I know that you guys can do it and it looks great. So let's do the next one together. We're going to do a chain up of one, skip that next loop, go into the loop after that with a single crochet. And then these loops that we're making for ourselves, you guys can't really see, but this is my six and a half millimeter hook. I'm just gonna show you guys.
and then continue on with this pattern going all the way around our work including where the increase is the only difference where the increase is is that you're going to be inserting your stitch marker into that loop just so that we can visually see where things are at but other than that go ahead and make your way all the way around so we have just made it all the way around with our decrease single crochet chain section and then all we're going to do is take out our two millimeter hook we are done with this guy so go ahead and put it off to the side and then we can now introduce our six and a half millimeter hook and then the next thing we're going to do is just go into those little loops that we made for ourselves with a single crochet so all we're going to do is do a chain up of one and then going into those loops it could be a little difficult because they're pretty small but you can kind of just feel around for them and then single crochet just like that and that is so much easier than trying oh well, i mean just going into the two millimeter loops is pretty much impossible the six and a half millimeter so we're doing all right but once we get here go ahead and just put one single crochet into each of these loops that we made for ourselves and then i'll meet you guys back once when we get all the way over to our peak so that we can do an increase so we are back and at the bottom of our v-neck and this is going to be pretty much the same way that we did the previous row. We just want to maintain this point that we have. So we're just going to go in with an increase of three single crochets. So here is one single crochet, two, and then one more. And then from here, we're just going to single crochet going back up to our first single crochet that we made for ourselves with our six and a half millimeter hook. And then we'll slip stitch into that first loop that we made for ourselves and then we'll chain up one and cut and then we can get started on the body all right so this is what we have once when we have gone all the way around the row of single crochet with our six and a half millimeter hook cut and tied and this is the entirety of our collar that we're going to have and the next thing we're going to do is actually go in with our body portion and the first thing that we're going to need to measure out is the space between your underarm down to where you want the bottom of this top to be I have already went ahead and measured mine out so I'm going to make a chain of 11 inches or 28 centimeters or that comes out to about 40 chains. Now that we have our chain we're going to be going in with our first row of half double crochets so all that is is blocking off that last chain. We're going to do a chain up of two that counts as a half double. We're going to prepare for half double so that's just a yarn over Then we're going to insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the third loop from our hook. From here we're going to yarn over pull through that loop we should have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over pull through all three and that is our first half double crochet let's do just one more together yarn over insert our hook into that next loop that we have in our chain yarn over pull through from here we're going to yarn over pull through all three loops that we have on our chain and from here we're just going to work our way all the way down our chain putting one half double crochet into every loop that we have, but leaving the last one because we will be doing an increase of two into that last one together. Now that we've made it all the way down with our row of half double crochets into this last loop, we're going to be doing an increase. And all that is, is putting two half double crochet into that same loop. So there's one, and then put one more into that same loop. And then from here, we're going to be switching out for back loop single crochets. So how we do that, we're going to do a chain up of one to work our way up to the next row, flip our work, and we're going to be working into the back loops, but maintaining this increase along this side, because this is going to increase up underneath our underarm, and then we're going to shoot straight up for a shoulder chunk, and then we can continue on from there, but this just needs to rise up just a little bit more. But once when we are ready, we're going to insert our hook into this back loop with one single crochet, like that, and then also two single crochet into that first back loop that we have because this is our increase side and then from here put one back loop single crochet into every loop that we have going back down our work and then we're going to be alternating between back loop singles and back loop half doubles so when we get to the end do a chain up of two flip our work and come back down with back loop half double crochets while maintaining the increase on the same side that we were just at and then that's basically it for this section. We're just going to keep going back and forth with back loop half doubles and back loop singles while maintaining the increase on one side and bluntness on the other until this portion reaches from our side over to the front of our body. But right after that, we're going to start working on our shoulder chunks. So just make sure that you guys end on the increase portion. But other than that, go ahead and have at it and then I'll meet you guys back to let you guys know my row count and my measurements. So we are back and we have our little underarm portion 
And now we're going to go in with our shoulder chunk. But right before we go in with that, I said that I was going to tell you guys my measurements and my row count. And I have a total of nine rows or about three inches or eight centimeters from one side to the next. And then once when we have this, we're going to want to put this up to our body. And then from this top corner that we should be ended at, we're just going to measure all the way up to our shoulder. And then whatever measurement that is, we're going to make a chain that comes out to that measurement. So my measurement is actually just two and a half inches or six centimeters. So that comes out to about eight chains. So from here, I'm going to take my six and a half millimeter hook again, insert that onto my hook and then make my chain count, which is eight. Once when I have my chain count, what we're going to do from here is block off that last chain, do an extra chain up of one that is our turning chain and then into that loop that we blocked off or our second chain from our hook. We're going to be going into that back loop with a single crochet because that's the next row that we're doing in this pattern. And as you guys can see, this is our chain. And when I say back loop, I just mean this loop that we have right here with a single crochet. Let's do the next one together into this back loop with a single crochet. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down and then basically just maintain our pattern for as long as you guys need until this shoulder portion reaches inward enough so that it reaches the edge of our collar that we made for ourselves. Mine is actually going to be very, very small. I'm just going to go down with my row of single crochets and then come back up with my row of half double crochets, no increases, no decreases into those two rows. And then from there, I will be ready to connect into my collar, but you guys can obviously adjust as much as you guys need, but go ahead and just maintain. That's not a single, but go ahead and just maintain this pattern. And then I'll meet you guys back once when you guys have your shoulder chunk so that we can connect it into the collar together. We are back and I have my super duper tiny shoulder chunk that I told you guys I was going to have. This is just two rows, a, a row of back loop single crochets and a row of back loop half doubles. And we did end along the top because we do need to insert our hook into the collar where our stitch markers are so that we can work our way down towards the front. And now that we are up here, we can now go ahead and attach it. So all I'm going to do is insert my hook into this loop that's right next to my stitch marker with a slip stitch. And now that we're attached, we're going to go in with our next row and the next row that we have right here is actually going to be back loop single crochets because we just finished off with back loop half doubles. So all we're going to do is slip stitch into the base, which is the collar once, and then we're going to be working into this body portion that we have. So into the base, we're going to slip stitch into that next loop that helps us work our way up to the next row. Once we have that, we're going to now be working into the body portion and everything is going to be exactly the same. We're going to go in with back loop single crochets, except the first two back loops. We're going to be going in with a decrease since this is a V neck. It's going to come down to a sharp point. We're going to want to maintain that sharp point. So what we're going to do is insert our hook into that first back loop, yarn over, pull through into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And once we have that, we're just going to go all the way down, putting one single crochet into every back loop that we have in our work. Once we make it all the way down, we're going to do a chain up of two, flip our work, and then work our way back down with back loop half double crochets, but leaving the last two loops so that we can go in with another decrease of half double crochets into the back loops. But I'll meet you guys back so that we can do that together. So this is our work upside down, but it's upside down so that I can show you guys how we're going to be connecting it into our collar and we're going to connect it just making sure that we know which direction we're going in into the V neck portion. We're going to be working down this way first. And I'm just saying that now because I know it can be confusing because I definitely have gone the other way by accident. But now that we have that out of the way, we have just these last two back loops left to go into for our half double crochet row because we went all the way down with our back loop single crochets and back up with our back loop half doubles. So into those last two loops, we're going to be doing a decrease. So we're going to prepare for a half double crochet, insert our hook into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through. And then we're going to go into that last back loop that we have in this row. From here, we should have four loops. Once we have that, we're just going to yarn over, pull through all four loops on our hook. And then that is our decrease combining the second to last and the last loop in this row. Then once we have that, we're going to need to insert this into our 
base, which is our collar, so that we can attach this row. And all that is going to be is counting out the next two loops. So here is one, here is two. We're going to slip stitch into that second loop to close off this row. And then once we have that, our next row is a row of back loop single crochets. And in order to work our way up to the next row, we're going to insert our hook into that next available loop that we have in our base with a slip stitch. Once when we have that, we will be flipping our work. And then now that our work is flipped, we're going to be decreasing into those first two back loops that we have. So we're going to not yarn over because this is single crochet. We're going to insert our hook into that first back loop, yarn over, pull through into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook from here. We're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then we're just going to go all the way down with back loop single crochets when we make it to the end, just like before, do a chain up of two, flip our work, and then do back loop half doubles coming all the way down, leaving the last two loops so that you guys can do a decrease into the second to last and to the last back loop. And then from there, we're going to slip stitch into the base just like how we did. So if we're working our way in towards with our half double crochet row, we're going to count up two loops, slip stitch into that second loop. And then if we're working on our back loop single crochet row, we're just going to slip stitch up one loop, flip our work, and then go back down with back loop single crochets. And we're going to keep doing that pattern all the way down until we hit this middle peak that we have into the bottom of our V. So I'll meet you guys back once when we have all of this done. We are back and we have finished off doing one entire side of our V neck portion. And next we're just going to be going into this other half that we have on the other side of our v-neck. So to get started on this other side, I have just one loop left in the middle. So what we're going to do is go back with a row of back loop single crochets just so that we can go into that loop. And then after that, we're going to continue on with the pattern going all the way up. But instead of doing decreases, we're going to be going in with increases into the loop that's right next to the base. So just to do this portion, we're going to do a chain up of one then go in with back loop single crochets all the way up until we get to that middle loop. We're not going to be doing a decrease. We're just going to slip stitch into there and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can work our way up on the other side. We just made it all the way down with this middle row of just back loop single crochets. And once when we get here, we're going to basically mirror everything that we did on the first side. So the row that I had on the other side was another row of back loop single crochets. So we're going to be doing that as well. And how we get started on that is inserting our hook into that next available loop with a slip stitch. Once we have that, we will be flipping our work. And like I said, we're going to be doing increases instead of decreases. So into this first back loop, we're going to be going in with two single crochets. So here is one and then here's two. And then from here, go all the way down with back loop single crochets. Once we make it to the end, do a chain up of two, flip our work, and then go ahead and work your way all the way down until you just have one loop left that's right next to your base. And then we're going to be doing an increase of two back loop half double crochets together. But a quick tip is that this last loop can actually be really easily overlooked. So just make sure that you're keeping up with the number count with whatever numbers you guys have. So I'll meet you guys back once when we are at the end of the next row. We are back at the end of our back loop half double crochet row and we are right next to the base. We did leave one loop for ourselves. And we're going to be doing an increase of two back loop half double crochets. So all that is, is preparing for a half double. And then into that last back loop, we're going to do one half double and then go into that same loop with another half double. And that is our increase that will help us work our way back up towards the shoulder portion of this V neck. But now that we have this, we are going to need to connect it to it so we can close off this row. So all that's going to be is counting up two loops. Here's one. Here's two, we're going to slip stitch into that second loop. And then once we have that, we're going back with our pattern, which is now back loop single crochets. So we're going to slip stitch up just one loop, flip our work and then into this first back loop that we have, go in with an increase of two single crochets into the back loops. And then we're going to keep doing that all the way down. Once we make it to the end, do a chain up of two, flip our work work back up with back loop half double crochets while doing an increase into that last back loop. And then that is just about it. I'll meet you guys back once when we have the same amount of rows that we have on the other side so we can do our shoulder chunk. So this is what we have for our piece so far. We've made our way all the way up with our pattern. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is go in with our super tiny shoulder chunk, at least mine is super tiny. 
but it does not quite matter where you guys ended go ahead and just do a chain up of whatever stitch row you guys are on and then maintain that same size shoulder chunk that you guys have and then i'll meet you guys back so that we can do the underarm portion together so we've just gone in with our shoulder chunk and everything is turning out great and once when we have that we are going to do our underarm portion that we have right here and the only prep work that we need to do is count out and see how many loops that we have from this shoulder chunk corner down to where we started doing this so basically the chain that we made from this last increase row that went all the way up to our shoulder and like i said in however many clips ago i had a total of eight chains so all i did was counted from the top counted down eight inserted my stitch marker and then now what we're going to do from here is work our way up with the next row which is going to be back loop half double crochets work our way all the way up but leaving the last two loops because we will be doing a decrease because on this side we did increases and we need everything to even out so i'm going to start off with my half double crochets work my way all the way up and then i'll meet you guys back just two loops right before we get to the stitch marker so that we can do that decrease together we made it all the way down with our row of back loop half double crochets and now we're going to do our decrease into the second to last loop and then into the loop that has our stitch marker in it because there are eight stitches on the other side so let's do this decrease together we're going to yarn over insert our hook yarn over pull through and then into that next loop yarn over pull through yarn over pull through everything on our hook and that is our decrease that should match the increase that we have on the other side but since we're here we are also going to be doing the next decrease which is going to be back loop single crochets so we're going to do a chain up of one we're going to flip our work and then once when we have that into this first back loop insert your hook yarn over pull through into that next back loop yarn over pull through we should have three loops on our hook from here we're going to yarn over pull through all three and then that is our decrease and that is basically going to be this portion of the rest of the front panel and just keep going until you guys have the same amount of rows that you guys have on the other side i had nine on the other side so that's the amount of rows that i will be doing right here once when we have that amount we will be cutting and tying and then we can get started on the back panel which forewarning is actually very similar to doing the front panel minus all of the increases and decreases so it's a little bit easier so i'll meet you guys back once we have this chunk done and then we can get started on the back we've just finished up going in with the underarm chunk for the other side and i have cut and tied and we are actually all done with the entire front panel and now we just need to go in with the back panel and that's going to be a lot easier so all i'm going to do for now since we're going to be repeating what we did right here from our underarm all the way up to our shoulder chunk is i'm going to be going in with these rows that we have right here right before we connect it into the base which is the collar so do the same amount of loops same amount of rows that you guys have in the front and then same thing for the shoulder chunk and then i'll meet you guys back to show you guys where we'll be attaching it into the collar and then also how we're going to do the rest of the back portion so do this little chunk and then i'll meet you guys back so in the previous clip i was mentioning that we need to do the underarm portion and the shoulder chunk that is exactly the same way that we did the front panel and i have done so and once when we have this we're going to attach it into the next available loop that we have into our collar and then from there we're going to continue on with the pattern with back loop half doubles back loop singles but we aren't going to be doing any increases into the back so let's just start this off together and then i'll let you guys just make your way all the way across from there so what we're going to do i can now take out this stitch marker and i'm going to be inserting our hook just into the next available loop that we have into the base as you guys can see this one has our front panel into it so we're going to go into that next one yarn over and pull through and my next row is actually a row of back loop single crochets so just like how we did the front in order to work our way up to the next row for a back loop single crochet we're just going to slip stitch up one loop we're going to flip our work and then now we can work all the way down with back loop single crochets and then once we have that we're going to do a chain up of two do back loop half double crochets going all the way up our work and then we're going to attach it into the base by counting up two loops slip stitching into that second loop to close off that back loop half double crochet row 
and then just one more time so work our way up to the next back loop single crochet row we're just going to be slip stitching up one loop into the base and then going back down and we're going to keep going back and forth like that until we reach this loop that we have along the other side of our back portion that is right next to where we have our front panel and then from there we are going to be doing the shoulder chunk and the underarm portion again but i'll meet you guys back just so we can start that off together and then have at it from there and this is what our work should generally be looking like right now we went all the way across with our stitches and then now we're just going to do another little shoulder chunk along the side so all that is is doing a chain up of however many chains you guys need if you guys are on a half double crochet row chain up of two a single crochet row chain up of one and then just make the same amount of rows that you guys have on the other side for your shoulder chunk so how we just do the shoulder chunk just one more time since we don't have any more loops left to go into what we're going to do is do a chain out of one since working our way down is going to be back loop single crochets and from here we will be flipping our work and then just put one back loop single crochet into every loop that we have this doesn't have any increases or decreases in it so just put one single crochet into every back loop and then once we get to the end do a chain up of two flip our work and then go in with back loop half double crochets and then keep going back and forth until you guys have the shoulder chunk that you guys need all right so we are back with our well, my super tiny shoulder chunk right here and as you guys can see, I have already inserted my stitch marker into the same chain count that we had when we first started this portion so that we have the same amount of loops on both the front and the back. But since I am at the top, I will be cutting and tying. But if you guys are at the bottom right now, then no need. You guys can just work your way up until you guys get to your stitch count and then you guys can decrease from there. But I am going to do a chain up of one. I will cut. And then from here, I will be reattaching my yarn into the loop that I have right after my stitch marker but I'm only doing that because of the way that I counted my stitch markers so I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop insert our yarn onto our hook and then whatever is the next row that we have in our pattern we are going to continue doing it that way and we are also starting from the top instead of the bottom because we want the pattern to maintain the same way we would still want this ribbing to be on the outside instead of on the inside so once when we have that, we're going to pull our hook through, do a chain up of one to secure, and this just so happens to be a back loop single crochet row. And then into these first two back loops, we are going to be going in with a decrease. So let's decrease together. We're gonna to insert our hook into that first back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then also into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. And once we have that, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three. And then from here, the rest is pretty repetitive. We're just gonna work all the way down with back loop half doubles, do a chain up of two, work our way back, leaving the last two back loops and doing a decrease of two back loop half double crochets into those two last loops. And go ahead and maintain that. Make sure that it is the same size as the front underarm portion that you guys have. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam up the sides together. We just finished up going in with our shoulder chunk for our back panel. And all we need to do now is just seam up the side so that it can be closed off and then also seam up the little shoulder chunk that we have as well. So that's going to be fairly easy. How we're going to do that is just sandwich both ends together and go all the way down with a single crochet row, making sure we're going into the front and the back loop at the same time. So let's do that together. I'm just going to adjust my grip really quick. I'm going to insert my hook into this bottom corner and then also into the working yarn that I have. And then from here, I'm just going to pull through chain up one to secure. And from here, we're just going to insert our hook into the first available loop we have in the front panel, and then into the next available loop that we have in the back panel, and single crochet everything together. And that is basically it, so go ahead and keep doing this all the way down until you guys don't have any more loops left to go into, and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do our shoulder chunk together. So we just went in with our first side seam, and now we're going to connect our shoulder chunks together, and that's going to be super simple. The only tip that I have for you guys is actually just to make sure that our seams are facing the same direction. But since your seam is up on top, you guys don't need to do anything. Just readjust your work so that it's easy for you guys to insert your hook into this little shoulder chunk that we have. And then we can do that part right now. So this part's pretty simple. The only thing we're going to do is go in with a row of single crochet, kind of like how we did the sides. The only difference is that we don't have any loops for us to go into. So we're going to have to try to 
eyeball that. So all I like to do is insert my hook into the closest loop that I have that's right next to the base into the front panel and then try to find the same loop in the back panel. Once we have that, I like to insert my yarn onto my hook and from there pull through. Now this is nice and secure and for me this one is going to be really small because I only have two rows but we're just going to find a loop in the front panel and try to find the same loop in the back panel and then from there single crochet it together and you guys are going to keep doing this all the way down try to make it as even as possible once when you guys make it to the end go ahead and cut and tie and then we can get started on the sleeve so we're back and we have finished up going in with our seam of the shoulder chunk and the side piece and now we can go in with our sleeve and the first thing that we're going to have to do before we go in with the length of the sleeve is just go all the way around with a row of single crochet so that it's easier for us to actually go in with the sleeve. So that part's going to be fairly simple. All we're going to do is insert our hook into one of the loops that we have that's right next to this bottom seam right here. We're going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook and then if you guys are following my directions within the video or the pattern, I will be going up this underarm portion with 12 single crochet because that's the chain amount that I originally went in with. And then once we get up to the shoulder chunk, I will be working my way down the next part of our shoulder chunk with another eight single crochet. And I'm gonna finish off with 12 single crochet along this underarm portion right here. So in total, I'm gonna go in with 40 single crochet, but you guys go ahead and adjust. We're back with our single crochet row that just went around the entirety of our armhole that we made for ourselves. Slip stitch into that first loop that we made for ourselves as well. And at this point, we're going to try this on to see how long we want our sleeve to be. And I'm going to go in with 16 inches or 41 centimeters, and that comes out to about 50 chains. So from here, go ahead and just make a chain that is the length that you want your sleeve to be minus the cuff, because we will have a good size cuff at the end as well. Now that we have our chain, our first row that we're going to be doing for our sleeve is going to be a row of half double crochets. So what we're going to do is block off that last chain. We're going to do a chain up of two that counts as a half double. We're going to prepare for a half double and then into that third loop from our hook or the loop that we just blocked off, we're gonna go in with a half double crochet. And then from here, we're just gonna go all the way down putting one half double crochet into every loop but leaving the last loop in this chain so that we can do an increase and then start to work our way up our sleeve together. So we've made our way down with our first row of half double crochets leaving that last loop and we're going to be doing an increase together. I know that you guys already know how to do it, but we'll do it together anyways, just one last time for this section. So what we're going to do is prepare for a half double, insert our hook into that last loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. We're going to be putting one more into that same loop, insert, pull through yarn over, pull through all three. And that is our increase. And we're going to continue doing increases all the way up the side that we're working into until we reach this seam that we have right here. And then once we hit that, we're gonna continue on with the same pattern, but we're gonna be going down with decreases instead of increases. So let's just show you guys how we work our way up to the next row, and then I'll let you guys do this portion by yourselves. But once we get here, we're going to count up the next two available loops. Here's one, and then here's two, and into that second one, we're gonna be inserting our hook and then inserting with a slip stitch so that we close off this row. And then once we have that, we're going to slip stitch up just one loop because we are still maintaining the back loop half double, back loop single crochet rows. From here, we're gonna flip our work and then we're going to increase into that first back loop. So once when we get here, we're going to insert our hook into that first back loop with a back loop single crochet increase of two. So there is one, and then there's two. And then from here, just work all the way down with back loop single crochets. Once we make it to the end, do a chain up of two and then work our way back up towards our armhole with back loop half double crochets while increasing into that last loop. And then just keeping up with that pattern until we get to our shoulder seam. So we are all back with one side of our sleeve and the next thing we're gonna have to do is basically just do the other side which is doing the same exact thing that we were doing, but instead of doing increases, we're going down with decreases. So let's start that off together. So getting started on the second half of our sleeve, this is going to be pretty much the same as everything else. We're just gonna be doing a decrease of two into those two loops that's right next to our base, regardless of whether if it's a half double crochet loop or a single crochet loop. And since I ended over here, I can just kind of go straight into my next one. 
So all that's going to be is I'm going to slip stitch into that next available loop. We're going to be flipping our work and since this is a single crochet row that's all I'm going to be doing and then from here we're just going to be doing a decrease of two. So insert our hook into that first back loop, yarn over, pull through, into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then from here go all the way down putting one back loop single crochet into every loop. Once we get to the end, chain up two, flip our work, do back loop half double crochets going back towards our base and then decreasing into those two back loops that's right next to the base. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left to go into and then we'll meet each other back so that we can seam up the sleeve together as well. And then once we have this side all done, we're actually going to do the same exact thing on the other side. So the entirety of the sleeve and the seam that we're about to do so that once when we're ready to go in with our cuff, which is right after this, we get a good feel of where it should be and how much we should measure. All right, so we have gone in with both of our sleeves. We have some measurements that we need to talk about and we have also put away our six and a half millimeter hook and grabbed our five. And once when we have this, we're ready to go in with the cuff portion, but that's going to be all dependent on you guys. I will give you guys my measurements, but you guys are gonna have to kind of finagle your way from there because it's gonna be different for everyone. But once when we have our sweater all done up, what we're going to do is flip it inside out so that all the seams are facing the inside. And then we're gonna want to try this on. And two things that we're looking for when we try this on is the length of our cuff which is actually going to be from wherever the sleeve ends for example mine may end i think it does end around here we're going to want the cuff to measure all the way down to mid palm and we're doing that because we are going to have the thumb hole slit if you guys don't want that then you guys can just adjust it to whatever you guys want and ignore the slit that we're going to do within the next few clips but yeah so go ahead and measure from wherever the sleeve ends all the way down to mid palm and then the second thing you're going to have to measure for is once when it's on you're going to want to make sure that the sleeve is facing the right direction make sure it's not twisted or anything funky is going on but you're going to want to insert a stitch marker into where around where your thumb is and that's going to be completely dependent on you guys so i already have my stitch markers in there but basically what i did since my sleeve ended about here i just kind of eyeballed it for now and then I put in a stitch marker, basically just trace the line from my thumb up to where my sleeve was and inserted my stitch marker. And then once when we have that, I mean, obviously do it on the other side. And then we can go in with the first row of our cuff, which is just a row of single crochet to clean up the edges. And then we can go in with the length. So let's get started with the first row of single crochet and then we can move on from there. So our first single crochet row for our cuff is going to be fairly easy. All we're going to do is insert our hook into the first side half double crochet loop that we have that's right next to our seam that we use to close up the sleeve with insert our hook pull that through and we're going to do a chain up of one to secure and then from here we're just going to be putting one single crochet into each side single crochet and then also one single crochet into each side half double crochet so we're going to try to cinch this in as much as possible but since we're in this side half double crochet row we're just going to skip over to this next side single crochet row we're going to insert our hook into there and then single crochet. Let's do the next bit together. This is a side half double. We're just going to be going in with one single like that. And then this is the next side half double. And then this is the next side single. So single crochet and then keep doing this all the way around. We're obviously going to run into our stitch marker, but take it out do the single crochet and then just put the stitch marker back into that loop so that you don't lose your spot. But we're just going to keep doing this all the way around once we make it to the end we are going to slip stitch into that first loop that we made for ourselves and then we can get started with the length so we have our single crochet row all finished up and yes i did try this on again just to make sure that everything was looking right i would suggest you guys do that too because this thumb hole can kind of make or break the sweater it could make it great or it could mess it up so just be really careful when you guys are going into it but once when we get here I did measure to see how long I wanted my cuff to be and that's going to be about 4 inches or 10 centimeters and that comes out to about 20 chains from here so I'm just going to do a chain out of 20. You guys can obviously adjust because it needs to come up to mid palm. Once when we have our chain for our cuff we're going to do back loop slip stitches for the rest of this portion so that it can cinch in. So all that is is blocking off that last chain. Do a chain up of 1. We're going to insert our hook into that 
loop that we blocked off or the second one from our hook and we're going to go in with a slip stitch and this is just going to be regular slip stitches all the way until we get to the end of this row we're just going to insert yarn over pull through one more time insert yarn over pull through and we're going to keep doing this all the way down and then from this portion i will be working towards my stitch marker which you guys don't have to that actually doesn't matter but i'm just going to be moving towards my stitch marker so that i can get to the thumb hole faster so i can show you guys how to do that but we will slip stitch into the base and then we'll move on from there we have our first row of slip stitches and now we will be inserting our hook into that base to close off this row like i said i'm going to be working towards our stitch marker so into the next available loop that we have right into here we're going to be inserting our hook with a slip stitch to close off this row and then in order to work our way up to the next row we're going to slip stitch into that next loop and then flip our work and then from here we're just going to be going in with back loop slip stitches so we're going to insert our hook into that first back loop in this row yarn over pull through everything let's do this just one more time insert into that back loop yarn over pull through everything and go ahead and keep doing this all the way down once we make it to the end i'll meet you guys back so that we can talk about the thumb hold just a little bit more okay so i am back with my second row and that was a row of back loop slip stitches and i worked all the way up if you guys are not quite at your stitch marker just yet because as you guys see my next available loop is where my stitch marker or my arm armhole my thumb hole is going to be you guys can just continue doing back loop slip stitches until you guys get to the loop that is right next to your stitch marker and then from here you guys can listen to what i'm about to say but don't hate me but we're going to want to try this on again so that we can figure out the length and where the spacing for the thumb hole is going to be i'm just going to tell you guys the loops that i counted out and where i placed my stitch marker but keep in mind this is definitely going to be different for everyone especially if you guys have a different size cuff and everything but like i said earlier my cuff is a total of 20 loops so from the edge of my cuff, I went ahead and counted down six loops and inserted my first stitch marker. Then I actually counted down another six loops, it's a coincidence, and inserted my next stitch marker. And then from there, from this second stitch marker all the way down, you're just going to put regular back loop slip stitches until you guys get down to the base. And then once when you guys get down to the base, you guys are going to slip stitch into that next available loop to close off that row, do a slip stitch into the next loop to start up the next row, and then do more back loop slip stitches. And you guys are just going to keep on doing that back and forth, no more slits, until you guys don't have any more loops left into our cuff, and then we will meet each other back so that we can seam it all up together. Alright, so we are back really quickly. We just went all the way down with our first little thumb hold chunk row going all the way down, and I did slip stitch into the next two loops, so I'm ready to work my way back up. But I'm just going to let you guys go from here. This is all still going to be back loop slip stitches all the way to the end once we reach the end do a chain up of one and then do more back loop slip stitches coming back down but just to let you guys know i did try this on again i know it's a little tedious but i did try this on again just to make sure that i liked where the thumb hole was and it fit on my thumb properly but also make sure that my sleeve was faced the right way so it's not twisted or anything and then everything was good so go ahead and just keep going all the way back and forth with back loop slip stitches until you guys don't have any more loops left to go into into the base and then we're going to meet each other back so that we can seam it up. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're back with our cuff. Everything has turned out great. Um, I've tried this on and the thumb hole is fitting perfectly and everything is aligned. Everything is amazing right now. And once when we're here, we're actually just going to be single crocheting the two ends of our cuff together because we don't have any more loops left to go into. So the easiest way is actually not very easy at all, but we're just going to be inverting our cuff so we're just going to pull it inside out so that all of our seams could be facing the same direction because as you guys can remember we flipped our sweater inside out or right side out i'm sorry we flipped our sweater right side out so that we knew how the sweater was actually going to lay on us so that's going to be completely up to you guys how you decide to do it this is not the funnest part but i'm just going to be pulling the cuff and the yarn because that's going to be intertwined into the sleeve which is kind of annoying but it's the best way that i know how to do it but we're just going to pull all the way through and then once when we have that we can just continue to pull a little bit of slack so that we don't need to keep pulling and then we can just single crochet our cuff ends together and if you guys are a little confused just take a look at what we did this is the seam for our sleeve right here 
and so all of our seams will be on the same side and i'm not going to show you guys how to do this because it is exactly the same way that we have done the sides and the shoulder chunks we're just going to sandwich these two pieces together making sure that our hook goes in through the front and the back panel loop at the same time and then just go all the way down once we make it to the end do a chain up of one and cut and then do the same thing that we just did here on the other side as well all right so we have just finished up going in with our sleeves thumb holes and all and everything is looking pretty great and one of the last things that we have to do is just go in with a bottom border but that's actually going to be exactly the same way that we went in with our cuff so we're just going to go around with the row of single crochet just putting one single crochet into every side half double and one single crochet into every side single crochet row once we make it to the end we're going to slip stitch and then we're going to do a chain out of 20 which is four inches or 10 centimeters which is the same thing that we have for our cuff and then just go in with back loop slip stitches from there so let's just start this off together really quickly so starting off this bottom border we're going to be grabbing our six and a half millimeter hook again and this part's going to be super simple we're just going to insert our hook into any one of these side row loops and then we're just going to be going in putting one single crochet into each of those loops so it doesn't matter if it's side single crochet or side half double just put one into each once we make our way all the way around slip stitch into that first loop that we made for ourselves and then we'll go in with the length of the bottom border from there we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row putting just one single crochet into each row loop that we had and we did slip stitch into the first one and like i said the rest of this is going to be exactly the same way that we did the sleeve so i'm going to go ahead and make my chain of 20. once we have our chain we're going to block off that last chain do a chain up of one and go in putting one slip stitch into that loop that we blocked off or the second loop from our hook and then from there just put one slip stitch into every loop that we have going back down our chain once we get to the base we're going to slip stitch into that next available loop that we have in the base to close off this row and then in order to work our way up to the next row we're just going to slip stitch up the next available loop flip our work and then go in with back loop slip stitches and that is going to be the entirety of our bottom border so go ahead and get that done and then i'll meet you guys back we're now all finished up going in with our bottom border and we don't have any more loops left to go into so now all we're going to do is just seam up this bottom portion and then we will be done but the thing that we're going to need to do is actually flip just this bottom border inside out because as you guys can see our seam is on the inside right here and we need that to match so all i'm going to do is just pull a little bit of slack and i'm not going to pull the entire sweater through all I'm going to do is just fold it over this way and then we can go in with the same single crochet seam that we've been going in with so we'll just start this off together really quickly. So now that we're here we're going to insert our hook into the first available loop into the front panel and then into the next available loop that we have in the back panel and then just single crochet it through. And we're just going to keep doing that all the way down until we get to the end once we don't have any more loops left to go into go ahead and cut and tie we just went all the way through with our bottom border and we seamed it all up and we are all done with this piece the last thing that we have to do is just go in and weave in all of our ends i am so jazzed up about this piece you guys have no idea it was so much fun to make and i really hope you guys loved it too because i know it was a really long one there is a pattern for you guys if you guys wanted to follow along that link is in the description if you want to grab that or you can always enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what got you started into crocheting and crafting in the first place and good luck to everyone who enters and also give this video a thumbs up and let us know what you liked about it. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down, but let me know how we can improve. And if you loved it, be sure to hit that bell so you know when there's new uploads for you guys. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Those links are down below. If you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel, links to Poshmark, Depop, and Etsy are down there too, along with tools used. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.